pledge of allegiance.
Thank you, Sean. Senator Galgiani, Supervisor Chiesa, Sheriff Dursky, Mayor Young, Mayor Blue Blake, Mayor McCarty, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. I wish to give a special thanks to our host, which you already been taking away a little of my thunder, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Reese Velasco, for this facility. It is a beautiful facility, and they're here tonight. Uh, Gonzalo and Elvira are here. They're in the back. Okay, well, if they come out, we'll say our thanks. We say our goodbyes to Congressman Jeff Denham, who significantly assisted us um, in the transfer of the Army base. We welcome Congressman Jeff Harder and look forward to finishing many projects while protecting our water rights. Adam Christensen is out hunting and fishing, while Sheriff Jeff Dursky is transforming his department. We say goodbye to Con Council Member Leanne Jones Cruz and welcome Council Member Lu Luis Uribe. Caltrans Director uh, from District 10, Mr. Dennis Agar, moves on, while Acting Director, Mr. Dan McElhaney, picks up his mantle. He and his staff will continue to work directly with Riverbank for in the safety concerns along State Route 108 and the North County Corridor. Senator Galgiani, you're our champion on water, public safety, education, and in many other areas. We recognize the tremendous support this community receives from Assembly mem Member Heath Flora, not only on the water issues, but, pro but for providing a voice for our valley. Our supervisor, Kristen Olson in Hawaii, gives our slice of the county relevance. Thanks to all who participate in the many different aspects from authority members, commissioners, directors, advisory committees, representatives to the various groups and organizations that help develop policies and protect Riverbank's interests. Your city council members are very dedicated and industrious who work hard in the many facets of municipal service. And several are involved in forming policies at the state level through the League of California Cities. Our efforts these past six years are a setup for what will be a spectacular next two years. And moving forward, we always remember the past. During the past 50 years, the city of Riverbank expanded over six and a half times. Many of the businesses have changed hand or dissolved. New businesses have arrived and many are thriving. Over the next 50 years, new businesses will arrive and the challenges they face will be solved with our creative staff. Many of our religious groups and nonprofits have met the needs for Riverbank while new groups are added to their ranks. Generational changes also occurred. With each new generation, new challenges will be answered by the business solutions, technological advances, and governmental innovations. What will Riverbank look like in the next 50 years? The work we do today may not be realized for many years, but the results will show our vision and how strong we are in our preparations. Let's see where the future begins. The changes in the industrial complex support building local businesses and fostering economic development. Under the guidance of Ms. Melissa Holdaway, our industrial complex is in a, a position to affect our future in an extremely positive way. Our business incubator has transitioned seven businesses. Two are currently in transition, and we welcome anyone who believes they can develop a business to try their hand here. We removed the roofing and siding on many of the buildings at the Riverbank Industrial Complex and mitigated soil contaminated with PCBs. We also completed replacing the roofing and siding with capital improvement funds that we had set aside each year since 2010. Once remediation is complete, the remaining panel, uh, parcel will be transferred to the city. U.S. Army and U.S. Army Corps of Engineering have agreed to the terms of the feasibility of early transfer for the faucet. The U.S. EPA has yet to sign off on the faucet, but negotiations are reassuring. While timing of the transfer will be difficult to gauge, all necessary legal paperwork is expected to be completed by mid-year. 
transfer of the final parcel of property will require the concurrence and the signature of the governor. The LRA is also in the process of purchasing surrounding cell parcel properties adjacent to the industrial complex for the overall success of our development. The LRA request, released a request for proposal for a master developer and has selected the candidate we feel best meets the needs of the community and the Riverbank Industrial Complex. We have negotiated the term sheet and will expect a fully executed contract shortly. The LRA has obtained a new round of funding from the Office of Economic Adjustment for LRA operations. The city received two highly qualified proposals for the master develop developer. After the initial interview process and responses to additional questions, the city is partnering with Ametis Inc. Ametis is an advanced renewable fuels and biochemical company focused on the production through innovative technologies that replace traditional petroleum-based products. Livestock feed is a byproduct. Ametis has already secured the Riverbank site, signed an ethanol agreement, entered into a 20-year fixed-price feedstock supply agreement, completed preliminary engineering, and obtained necessary environmental approvals. Ametis is working closely with our staff to complete the design, engineering, and process through the city planning and building departments. This is historic. Ametis needs Riverbank to meet the mandate set forth in the Federal Renewable Fuel Standards and the California Low Carbon Fuel Standards to improve air quality, reduce greenhouse gas emissions, expand domestic employment, reduce dependence on impo imported crude oil, and attract investments into our industrial projects. This plant will eventually take 1.6 million tons annually of waste orchards, dead forest trees, and other biomass that otherwise would be burned and convert this waste into clean, low-carbon biofuels. Planning documents are in the process of completion, and if approved, construction of the riverbank plant may begin by mid-year. Their total commitment is in excess of $175 million, providing approximately 130 direct employees and over 1,800 indirect employees, drivers, transporters, and support staff. With the commitment of funding, long-term contracts, and proposed economic growth, Ametis is the right choice for the Riverbank Master Developer. The biofuels plant is not the only project. Ametis is committed to building the infrastructure at the industrial complex for future manufacturers and commercial projects. The industrial complex will be a major regional employer in very short order. PMZ commercial developer, Mr. Kerry Pope, will be managing the industrial complex not associated with the biofuels plant. The community has received a federal build transportation grant of $20 million that is dedicated to the construction of a three-mile segment of the North County Corridor. The EIR should be completed and considered in January of 2020. If that EIR is approved, the three-mile segment will start construction in 2022 and be completed by 2025. Future overpasses at Clarabelle and the BNSF rails will lessen the impact of the tracks at Terminal Avenue. The total cost of this segment will be $81 million with additional SB1 funds, local Measure L funds, and public facilities fee completing the funding source. While the North County Quarter will affect or impact the Riverbank Industrial Complex, the existence of the North County Corridor as a freeway adjacent to the site will have valued benefits. With existing rails, the possibilities are tremendous. The opportunities that are present at the Riverbank Industrial Complex are huge, and nowhere in this region are opportunities as great as they are here in Riverbank. 
with the vision of the Ametis team, high paying jobs, and regional reach. The Riverbank Industrial Complex will ensure Riverbank will benefit well beyond the next 50 years. Our Development Services Administration Manager, Kathleen Kleek, has been improving our roads and securing transportation grants. Her efforts provided funding for the Roselle and Clarabelle uh, intersection several times. It's now under construction, and those signs say that it will be completed in two days. <laughs> as well as uh, Patterson Sidewalk Project, which has recently been, been completed. Measure L funding, authorized, authorized by you, the voters, um, have improved 50 roads this last year and will allow the overlay of, lay of Claus Road this year and will complete additional crack and slurry seals on many other roads. In addition, A Street from Patterson to Kentucky will be upgraded with a street overlay and full ADA compliance. The city also partnered with St. Patrick Catholic Church for a complete street project on calendar to make the area more walkable for residents. Your Measure L monies are being used in the most efficient and effective way. Kathleen has been involved in the planning of regional roads and looks forward in developing non-motorized networks. Our planning manager, Donna Kinney, has been busy with the housing planning and construction of over 300 homes on the east side of the city and is in the process of bringing our annexation strategy forward. Our Crossroads West specific plan is completed and will com come before the City Council for consideration. If approved, the project is 380 acres of contiguous properties south and west of the existing city boundaries. Highlights of this project include expansion of our sports complex to a 22-acre regional sports complex, 59 acres of commercial with up to 550,000 square feet of retail space, two schools, a fire station, 2,400 homes, and parks. The project is building on the success of, of the current crossroads with improvement in the quality of life areas. Broman Development built the current Crossroads Shopping Center and will build out the Crossroads West Shopping Center. Broman will continue to manage both centers. The retail being developed will complement the existing shopping center and continue to attract business that will thrive. The federal government, specifically the US EPA, has instituted MS4 which is the elimination of pollutants from our waterways by stormwater runoff. All stormwater must be captured and treated prior to discharge in our waterways. Our developments are complying with this law while we are still building a regional stormwater storage system that will take most of the stormwater runoff and recharge your aquifer. The bottom line is that we will continue to conserve our water resources as we continu continue to develop the required housing we need. We will find the way to capture all wastewater and treat it to be reintroduced to the aquifer or transferred for agricultural use. Our public works director, Mr. Michael Rydell, has received a grant to develop a proof of concept for a tertiary plant with regional implications. With all the reuse of water, stormwater capture, and our conservation we will be replenishing the aquifer with more water than we use. Governor Newsom announced several key appointments that helps tackle some of the state's most urgent issues. Meeting those, the most diverse water needs, boosting economic development across California, and bolstering the education system. His appointment of Mr. Bill Lyons as Ag Liaison and Joaquin Esquivel as the chair of the state water board are most positive. Governor Newsom also declared a severe housing shortage throughout California. Our acting city, our uh, assistant city manager, sorry, and uh, finance director, Ms. Maricela Garcia, financial review, looked out the next five years identifying our revenue sources and obligations. We analyzed the threats to our income 
as well as our opportunities to increase revenue streams. While our, our reserves are much stronger than anticipated, this has been due to frugal spending, careful planning, and a tremendous increase in sales tax. Thank you. We are still uncertain, there are still uncertainties. Our contract with the Riverbank Police Services have increased by 10%. CalPERS require, requirement cost will continue to increase significantly in the upcoming years. We are currently paying an additional unfunded liability to CalPERS and their recent investments are, to, are reported to be less successful. In 2014, we paid $385,000 to CalPERS or 13% of our payroll. This coming year, we'll pay $713,000 or 21% of our payroll to CalPERS. Our unfunded liabilities have increased from 1.8 million to 6.1 million through 2040. Currently, 72% of our general fund is used for salaries and benefits and will continue to increase. I would like our city employees to know that the city council truly appreciates their partnership during the latest contract negotiations, which has contributed greatly to the city's sustainability. We have a four-year contract with the employees with an agreement to form a subcommittee that will look at alternatives to CalPERS. This subcommittee will provide the start of contract negotiations in 2021. We are in discussions with the county for property tax sharing agreements. When a property is annexed to the city, the county will keep that current property tax or baseline to continue their current operations. The improvements to the annexed properties made at the city's risk will have an assessed value, special schools, excuse me, special districts and schools receive approximately 80% of the above baseline value. The remaining tax revenue is split 13% to the county and 6.6% to the city. While the county needs to provide for services countywide, the city has more of the burden than proportioned. We are currently discussing with the county for a more equitable tax sharing solution, one that will not burden the county, but one that was a better arrangement for the city to help them be sustainable. While the talks are informal, the latest comment by the county is to award those cities that do what they want a merit benefit in tax sharing. While this comment seems harmless, it was set a bit bad precedence. More formal talks will begin within a month. In 2018, Riverbank has enjoyed reduced crime numbers overall. Our Riverbank police services have a relatively high clearance and arrest rate. Last year, our police services generated over 14,600 cases. These case numbers include a wide variety of police activities ranging from dispatch calls and, self, and service to self-initiated um, self activity, excuse me, from the simplest of encounters to very complex, time-consuming investigation. During the year, our deputies made 545 arrests. The majority of these arrests were for property crimes, drug-related crime, not marijuana, and for, other, and for warrants. Crimes against persons and crimes of violence made up the minority of arrests. I'm very proud of our association with the Stanislaus County Sheriff's Department and extremely proud of the work accomplished by the Riverbank Police Service. The Sheriff's Department provides great service above and beyond our contract, if needed. They have a world-class SWAT. The rescue and recovery services are the best in the region. Well, I have, while I have stated the Riverbank Police contract with the county has increased 10% with very little discussion, we are down 27% in sworn officers. The county is struggling to fill their ranks and file. Recent policy shifts and the 10% pay increase may help, but we must wait and see. However, we're looking for other ways to bolster our police services elsewhere without jeopardizing our reserves. This is worth exploring as costs continue to increase. 
while services are being stretched. Homelessness and homeless are issues, are not issues of the county, not issues of the city. They are a societal issue. Our entire community must become involved to solve homelessness. Our community is struggling with housing, transitional housing for the homeless, low income housing, affordable housing, housing in general. In fact, this county must have an additional 21,000 homes built by 2022. We may not meet this goal established by housing and community uh, development. However, we are making an effort. Affordable housing is greatly needed. What, we, what is needed to build affordable housing is funding. The state has set aside funding for affordable housing and we will take advantage of that offer. Last year, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals issued a ruling that in effect allowed homeless population access to public lands and public buildings if no facility to house homeless exist. If the state, is, the state is offering assistance to those declaring homelessness a crisis, this county, Riverbank, and six other county cities declared homelessness a crisis. Collectively, a grant to help the homeless program of $7.2 million was received. $500,000 is set aside for programs and street outreach. What Riverbank receives will depend on our program. What we don't want is homeless invading our parks or other public facilities and lowering the quality of life for all. The county suggested we provide a low barrier shelter. I'm opposed to that concept. A low barrier shelter will allow for drugs, weapons, and animals unfettered access to the shelters. These are liabilities and does not address the problem. Our great group of nonprofits and faith-based community religious leaders and service organizations that support many of the uh, community needs came together to discuss the homeless issues and plan to take action this year. My strategy is to provide a host house style facility for the needs of Riverbank. This will be a transitional housing. Educational programs through the Cambridge Academy will offer life skills and training that could lead to employment. A low income housing program for those who transition successfully will be required. Together with the nonprofits, the faith-based organization, our housing authority, Riverbank, and the county, we can design a program that fits Riverbank to provide the relief for those in need, uh, for those who seek it, and provide a roof for those who need it. We've had great success in affordable housing. The apartments on Claus and Patterson, and the newly constructed one at Claus in California should be duplicated as much as possible. In our requirements, we must also meet the needs of the migrant farm worker housing. If we can accomplish this, we can use the housing as a temporary housing for the homeless in the winter months. 50 years ago, our city leaders accomplished a tremendous task of securing funds for the community center, swimming pool, and park. The total cost of this complex was $400,000, which included the price of the land. On August 17, 1968, a dedication ceremony was held for the completion of all the projects. There in the ceremony, the leaders placed a time capsule in the cornerstone of the community center with directions to open and display its contents on this date 50 years later. During our preparations for opening the capsule, it was discovered there were no contents in the capsule. <laughs> Whether it was by design, which I think, or by other influences, the intent of those leaders were to have certain items in the capsule on display. While those items are lost, the community center is currently being renovated to be preserved for the next 50 years. When we rededicate the community center, we will have items in the capsule. I guarantee it. <laughs> Funds are being sought for the upgrades of the swimming pool facilities, the scout hall, will short, follow shortly after. Several years ago, 
there was an incident that identified the great need for increased security for our city employees and for those doing business at City Hall. While surveying the city buildings, our city manager, Sean Scully, realized that employees were working over each other. They were conduct we are conducting a spatial analysis to determine the current needs, near-term needs, and the needs 50 years out. We will also determine the funding required and the method of payment. <coughs> Excuse me. This includes the police ser uh, service facilities. We authorized two cannabis dispensaries and placed a one-year moratorium on dis additional dispensaries until an evaluation on the effects of their operations are on the neighbors and on the city. While cannabis dispensaries are now part of the landscape, the perceived disruption and open public use of cannabis did not materialize. The retail properties they occupy have been significantly improved and the city safety revenues increased. The black market for marijuana has been reduced, but crystal meth and heroin have not been affected. This trend was expected, but new users of the harder drug will be lessened as fewer contacts with dealers are anticipated. The moratorium has been extended and may eliminate future dispensaries and reduce city's revenues for security, possibly reversing the current trend. There are many illegal acts from those with an independent purchase program. The public use of cannabis that is open are mainly from non-retail operations and have zero quality control. Other activities in Riverbank discovered illegal uh, cultivation of marijuana. Approximately 350 pounds of unprocessed plants were confiscated. The residents were arrested for the illegal grow. While Prop 64 allows for local control of the cannabis industry, the state is looking to regulate deliveries in local communities. We take offense to that method of change without consultation. This month, the city of Riverbank will join cities and counties across California in filing a lawsuit against the Bureau of Cannabis Control to challenge the adoption of this cannabis regulation. The illegal regulation will allow the delivery of cannabis in every city and county in the state of California, even if jurisdictions that prohibit these deliveries. The Bureau of Cannabis Control adop adopted this regulation despite the fact that Proposition 64 specifically preserved the power of local control to regulate and even ban cannabis deliveries. This lawsuit is being filed and uh, to protect local control and the voters' intent when they voted for Prop 64. It looks better in writing. <laughs> Under the Parks and Recreation Director, Sue Fitzpatrick leadership, we had another successful annual cheese and wine festival with more attendees this year than in prior years. This event is more family oriented and diverse. Each year we improve and the event uh, for this upcoming year will be even better. Our recreational programs are extremely successful and had record enrollment in numbers. Some highlights were the Sharks and Mermaid swim program for the kids in the autistic spectrum and a drum circle for the special needs. Our Halloween hayride continues to excite and thrill. Some of the thrill seekers come annually as far away as Tracy and Reset. Our annual Christmas parade continued to be popular. The big man himself always shows up and kicks off his season. Last parade, we had three marching bands, floats, and the best flag bearer. That was me. <laughs> Our Memorial Day ceremony was well attended. This year, we will have a special guest, and it will touch all that attend. What to expect? We received a grant for $352,000 for the renovations of the Riverbank Community Center and began construction. Most of the needed revenues will be completed while funding for the kitchen is being sought. Love Riverbank is returning on April 13. One church with Pastor uh, 
job will be the host and lead our efforts to improve Riverbank. All over the next few years, we will remain vigilant and defend our rights as a community from the state grab of funds, water, or any other undue burden that does not provide a clear benefit to Riverbank. We will continue to improve our transportation and road system while providing friendlier bike and pedestrian pathways. We will continue to provide the best in our parks and activities for our youth to enjoy so they can grow in a safe environment. We will seek funding to improve existing facilities. We will complete a citywide park master plan so as the city grows, we secure the open space, sports field, aquatic co uh, complex, and other facilities we need. We will seek community input to Proposition 68, the statewide park development and community revitalization program, on four projects that meet the criteria, <clears throat> but most importantly, the needs of Riverbank. We will lease acreage of uh, Army Corps of Engineering property adjacent to Jacob Meyer Park to extend pedestrian and bike trails. <coughs> we will identify new sources of revenues to fully staff our police, human resources, economic development, code enforcement, and in parks and recreation. We will continue with quality development and forming partnerships with the businesses at the Riverbank Industrial Complex and throughout Riverbank. In the near term, we are exploring community communication outreach with electronic information signs, allowing food trucks, installing traffic monitors. You can see there is a vision to our future as we continue to move forward in the planning, development, and improvements. Our city is much better off than when I first gave this address. There's been great strides in retail addition, housing improvement, potential growth. The state of our city is strong. And only one way is the state of the city poorer, and that is because we lost one of Riverbank's best friends and supporter, Mr. Scott McRitchie. He contributed to our community through his guidance in our housing authority, friends of Jacob Myers Park, feeding those in need, the budget advisory committee, and many other community activity. Scott was a humanitarian who gave much to this community. His contributions will be long, long be remembered. This city has also lost other major contributors, leaders, entrepreneurs, fellow workers, and pioneers in our city, and they will be truly missed. To keep the city strong, Riverbank City Council will continue to look to the future and evaluate what we must do today. To do all of this, and there is a lot that we're doing, we must rely on a superior staff. The city of Riverbank is supported by the best staff, not only in this county, but in our region. I'd like to have Mr. Sean Scully come on up and um, speak to his, some of his uh, employees. Sean? And Sean is someone, as you can see, we have to look up to. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes this difficult because I have to. Uh, so very briefly, if you'd like to applaud, that's fine. Maybe you can hold it till the end because there's a couple names here. But we're, we are just, I am very lucky to have uh, what I would say is the best staff um, in the area. Of course, I'm biased. But uh, just to run through them, uh, this is not everybody, but uh, some of the folks that are here this evening. We have our legal team, Tom Hallinan, snuck in somewhere, and Robin Baral. If you could stand up and say hello, Tom, Robin. Uh, uh, my partner in crime, Maricela Garcia, the assistant city manager. <coughs> Sue Fitzpatrick, our parks and rec director. You guys got to stand. Sorry. I <laughs> want people to know. Uh, Michael Riddell, our public works director. The only time you'll ever see this guy in a suit, ever. <laughs> Donna Kenny, our uh, planning and building manager. And uh, Grateful Dead fanatic. Uh, <laughs> Anna Nicholas, our uh, finance manager. Kathleen Cleek, our Demo Development Services Administration Manager and Road Guru. Uh, my, two of my core admin team members that I, we couldn't do hardly anything at the city without. Uh, Norma Torres Manriquez, who puts this event on, and Cheryl Stefani over here, who also puts this event on. And 
Garrett Figueroa, who is our newest employee and works in the finance department. And finally, certainly not last, uh, the person I asked you not to clap for earlier, uh, Chief Kiley, who is not only one of the best chiefs I've ever worked with, but one of the best law enforcement professionals as well. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Sean. Now, I look forward to the next two years that will set the stage for Riverbank for the next 50 years. And before I ask for any questions, Senator, would you like to say a couple of words? You don't have to prepare. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thank you anyway. All right. Uh, God bless Riverbank. Thank you and good night. And those who like to ask questions, are there any? Charlie? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'd like to know what you're going to do about this wood treatment plant over here. Running that pump all night, 24 hours a day, pushing that toxic smell out. That's not good. Uh, sir, that, uh, I know you've addressed that many times with the staff, and we have looked into it, and we've uh, told you exactly what's going on with that. There is, um, uh, it, it has been addressed, and... Um, there is a differing of opinions on that, but uh, I'd be happy to talk to you offline on it. Any other questions? Yes? I just wondered, is there any plan to replace the pipe that goes over the river to the treatment plant, considering how old it is? Marilyn, you know old age doesn't mean that it's not <laughs> worthy. <laughs> We, we, have done, we have done evaluations. We've done earthquake uh, or uh, seismic um, studies on it. We've done capacities on it, and it is a sound pipe. And um, if there ever is a need to replace that, uh, we're looking at development in the future, not to replace it over the river, but under the river. But that, that is a long ways off. We're not even at 50% capacity. So we're doing pretty good, Th those who built it 50 years ago. Thank you, Charlie. No other questions? All right, well, I want to thank you all for being here tonight. And please, enjoy whatever is over there. Thank you. <laughs>